Welcome and thank you everyone for participating in today's webinar presented by Dinu Raja Ratnam. So he's a marketing specialist at the Faculty of Medicine, Dentistry and Health Sciences at the University of Melbourne and has a great wealth of experience um, working with academics and researchers like us. So, and it's just the right person to advise us on how we can maximize the use of social media to promote our research. So the topic for today's webinar is LinkedIn versus Twitter. Which platform is right for you? So I'll leave it in your good hands, Dino. Hello, thank you, thank you Michelle and Michelle. Um, hello everyone, um, as uh, Michelle said, my name is Dino. Um, I'm part of the uh, Faculty of Medicine, Dentistry and Health Sciences. Um, and I work in a fairly large uh, team um, where we have, um, we've got expertise that are ranging from communications to engagement to social media, digital and all of that. Um, I myself personally um, been around the university system for a while and uh, I worked with academics pre the social media boom. Uh, and then seeing how uh, you know the research uh, promotion and things like that have transitioned from um, you know face-to-face -face contact uh, events and that sort of thing now um, to a lot uh, on social media. Um, today we'll be looking at what Twitter um, and LinkedIn bring to the table um, and how. Um, you'll make the most out of it or you could make the most out of it um, just a couple of things though um, first thing is um, there is no one really called a social media expert I think we're all social media users some of it are, some of us are closer to uh, the channels than others and so might understand a few more of the back end sort of things but often this works for each individual differently um, and you know there are similarities of course but it often tends to do um, um, it's up to the person using the channel as to how they make the most out of it and it depends on your networks and the people you follow and the people you like and so on and so forth um, to get started um, let's look at the overall just an overview of what social media really is um you know we all we all know that it's a bit of a network um each each platform be be not just twitter and linkedin uh, but also we're looking at uh facebook and now instagram and and then there's TikTok and all of these every platform has its own community etiquette and that's something we have to sort of understand that each one plays a different role, a different has a different purpose, um, and, and it's it's how best we sort of adapt um, be, between those and try and get the most almost create a synergy effect that we want for it. Um, and it's about and it's about cre having a digital footprint at the end of the day. It's about creating conversations or starting conversations and having enough interaction. Uh, that help you sort of tick off your goals. I I like to look at it as as there are three things that you can get out of social media in our in our sort of context in our sort of environment. I think the first one is is often a challenge for a lot of people, me included, and uh, I've seen a lot of academics sort of uh, struggle with it, which is self promotion. There is um, there is that little, you know, uh, tentativeness around saying, oh, this is what I'm doing and telling a lot of people about it. Um, but that's, that's something I think when you're in the social media cycle, you sort of, you will realize that a lot of that happens. Um, and it's, it's not such a, um, such a difficult thing to do. Um, I think the self-promotion bit. The second one is to build networks, is to build quality networks um, of, you know, people, people you will collaborate with, people you can reach out to, to have questions answered, um, you know, just a sounding board. And I think that's, uh, that's a key sort of um, benefit and a key sort of um, 
aspiration a lot of people will have um, around getting involved and making the most out of social media. And and lastly, um, I think what what we what we like to do is to be able to spread a message and build networks broader than just your immediate sort of discipline and have uh, networks that will well, how would you say it? Um, that can carry your uh, message of you know be it a goodwill message be it sharing advice um, and you know the real world implications of the work you do um, and carrying that forward the macro environment as I'd like to call it um, and that's sort of the three aspects of uh, what we'd like to achieve uh, by setting up um, setting up uh, on social media um, there's a funny one um, we uh, we like to tell uh, people social media is about is um, making sure people know that you know what you know. So making sure that the, those you want to sort of see you uh, know that you um, this is your expertise and this is what you can bring to the table. So it's about sharing that um, that little bit about yourself. Um, so LinkedIn and Twitter, um, I'd say in our context would be the, the two key sort of, um, uh, channels. Um, the others haven't caught on. I think Facebook sort of, sort of, uh, created a footprint, um, and it's sort of more, uh, social or oh, everything is social, but, um, more, um, like a personal sort of, you know, friends and family kind of thing. Um, whereas LinkedIn and Twitter are the ones that are taking the whole professional world forward um, on, on the digital platforms. Um, what's different about the two? And I'm sure most of you would already sort of, you know, have a good idea about this. Um, but Twitter, um, from being just a um, just 140-something character um, a news sort of channel, um, has is now a proper professional networking tool. Um, you, I mean, it's all about how many people retweet you. It's all about how many people like your like your posts, um, and it and it sort of drives uh, a lot of conversation. It it, it drives a lot of uh, collaboration. A lot of ideas come about, um, and it's very popular in the academic circles. It's huge, in fact. Uh, I mean, almost a lot of the good um, ideas nowadays seems seems to be, you know, kicked around um, in Twitter first, um, and then that good link to the various publications and um, and uh, other websites and so on. So that's what Twitter sort of brings to the table. And then you're looking at LinkedIn. LinkedIn essentially is a digital CV, in other words. It's um, and it's it's what recruiters look for. It's what uh, uh, a lot of uh, people who fund uh, projects look for, uh, and it's about um, it's about you doing your little pitch about yourself right there, and that, that and you leave it there for whoever needs to see it to be able to access it. Um, there are etiquettes around both, um, and and there are you know you you can you can share what you think needs to be shared um, but um, I think LinkedIn and Twitter that's that's the primary difference um, there are other differences around how long um, you know the a value of a post or what's the lifespan of a post um, so um, so th 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 these primarily are the two one is uh, almost like a networking tool and the other is more a um, corporate presentation or a resume sort of thing um now everybody approaches uh these platforms uh with different intent like i said uh with different sort of requirements um facebook essentially uh, like i said has become a, a very personal uh, uh almost an entertainment sort of tool um they're massively now into the video play um and that sort of seems to work um, and I think we leave that out 
um, in our conversation today and just look at the other two. Um, Twitter, uh, thanks to, I think, um, a lot of famous people um, in, in academia, in politics, in journalism. Um, it's sort of placed what we get from it. I think there is, obviously there's entertainment, there's also a lot of content being shared, like I said, and um, LinkedIn's about, a lot about Korea. Uh, LinkedIn's more about the bigger picture, if I can say that, and it's about opportunities, um, and that's, those are roughly the numbers that we're looking at, and this, trust me, changes every six months. If we did the same research in six months' time, those numbers could be a lot different. Um, and um, and I think Facebook has a challenge in Instagram in that up, staying up to date and being entertained aspect, but there isn't anything else out there that brings what LinkedIn and Twitter can do for you. Um, so we're looking at a, a typical post um, on these two channels, and I think Twitter sometimes on a good day. Uh, a, a tweet will have a shelf life of about seven hours. Um, that depends, though, um, on what the news cycle is like, um, and that new and that news cycle can vary on different network groups. Um, if it's if you're talking about academia per se, I think this is an average seven hours for something like this, um, and it's like I said. There is, a, there is a lot of people um, uh, using Twitter for quick, um, quick and easy sort of messages, um, but it's up to you to be able to manage your network um, and make sure that you're not getting lost um, or not um, putting it in places where you know it disappears quickly. LinkedIn, on the other hand, um, you can be assured um, you can have at least anything between a week to two weeks of, of life in a post. Um, and that gets seen if some, someone might not see it in the first day or the first hour, but you've got a couple of weeks before um, it usually loses its, its momentum. Um, and it's, again, I think using both together at the same time will deliver a, a really good synergy sort of effect. Um, which which is what we try and achieve um, as uh, you know by embracing social media. Um, LinkedIn, um, what are the essentials? Uh, what makes a good LinkedIn profile? Um, th there is no hard and fast rule. Let's remember that, right? It, again, it depends on who you're talking to. Um, who you want this want to be want to see your profile and and that will depend on um the you know what happens in that particular network if you take an example of a of a journalist let's say um they'll have a more what i would call an out there kind of profile um whereas someone in the sciences uh, will have a more factual um, you know, they'll be talking about research pieces, they'll be talking about the current um, work they're doing, um, that sort of thing. And then you get the arts and entertainment and that's a different beast of its own. So it's about, the, the, the few basics you'd like to cover is having a, a profile photo. Um, I think it gives a bit of person personability to the, to the profile uh, and a little bio. Um, just remember on any digital platform, be it uh, a text-based platform like LinkedIn or a video platform like YouTube, um, people's attention spans are fairly limited. Um, uh, even now I'd say, what, we're a couple of minutes into the presentation, people, you know, the, it's, it's, it's hard to keep people engaged over a long period of time. So trying and keeping your, uh, bio or the about section of your um, LinkedIn page, not too long, but long enough to give all the information that you want to give uh, without being uh, too abrupt is, is, is what one of those things. So the best way to sort of go about it is to browse through 
other people you think are doing it well so if you look at your your um let's say identify yourself a network group um and look at how other people are doing it and you will work out uh when you do look at other pages okay this works better than that and, and that that may be something that you can sort of use as a as a benchmark to to build your own pages um and then um always have contact information everybody wants to be contacted um and make sure they're current uh, make sure they're um, accessible and and also it's not too wrong to share your other social media account links as well like when i say other i'm talking twitter here for, on your linkedin page and just making sure that if someone is interested in what you have to say they have access to be able to listen to that so that's um that's uh, that aspect of it and in terms of experience i've seen linkedin pages where people just chuck in everything they've ever done in their lives and that's not a great idea um you're trying to leave it as focused to what you want to achieve as much as possible i know it's good to have you know extracurriculars and all of that and that's a good thing to do please do that but let's not get sort of carried away and again make the list so long that uh people lose interest halfway through so um the challenge primarily like with anything is to make sure that it's uh the content is sufficient uh and not too short and abrupt nor is it going to be too long that people lose um interest in what you have to say so that's um how you set up your essentials um and then one really crucial thing is to set up your publications um again i know i work with academics who are almost gun shy to almost list out all of the things they've done but please do and i think um someone who is interested in what you in in you uh is going to need to look at those kind of things so don't be shy make sure you list all of it uh and that's pretty pretty crucial um there's also uh something that's getting a lot of traction on linkedin it's called the pulse blogs um it's essentially like um it is a i mean it's a blog in many ways and it's it's the the again they're not really long ones they're fairly short and often have links to other other websites and pages um and this is a good way to share a much longer version of your opinion um in a particular space i it's not sometimes people are not the most, not really comfortable doing it um but i recommend giving it a crack when you set up your page and and just so it so it sort of sort of tells someone who's sort of looking at your page this is what you're interested in and uh, this is the direction you want to go in um all of that kind of stuff so um please um do it and a good idea to before you start is to go through all the other pages and just doesn't have to be just specifically in the sciences look at other disciplines as well and see what sort of relates to you and you'll get a really good idea about how to go about it but this um we've noticed is something that seems to work a lot for a lot of people um the engagement that uh, the pulse box blogs are creating is is pretty impressive so there's evidence that it's working um for how long and for how much uh, that keeps changing but that definitely does work and it's a great profile to have right then we go to twitter now twitter is huge for academics um thank god for uh celebrities and and politicians uh, and and the big news outlets who sort of given twitter its profile um uh but one group that's really embraced it and got the most out of it is in academia um there's there's heaps of um 
studies done. There's a, there's a lot of constant research that goes into understanding the engagement levels, um, but the number of citations. Um, at, at the outset, people were like, "Nah, you can't. It's not. You can't take mention on Twitter seriously." But now they are. It's it's really it's really grown. Um, and again, I think with Twitter, it's about given that it only has a seven hour lifespan, um, it's you're probably worth experimenting a little more with your tweets. Um, you can always change it if you want to, um, but it's it's much better to um, just be be present all the time. Um, it's one of those things that. I know everyone's stuck for time, but it becomes second nature. It's like texting a friend or, or something like that, where you're, this one friend is this huge network of people that you want to talk to. Um, and it's also a great tool that sort of connects academics. I think the what works best on Twitter is that you can't have long spiels. They're fairly short, um, and you can tag people, and it shows up on their... Uh, on their feed, um, and therefore it's easier to connect with each other. And it, it takes a bit of getting used to, 100%. It definitely takes a bit of getting used to. There are so many tricks around um, tagging, there are so many tricks around hashtags, but if it, it only comes with practice. Um, and it's not like you set up a page and you're going to have 100,000 followers and anything you say is going to just get reach it takes a while there's algorithms and all of those kind of things but don't worry about that just i think it's a case of practice it's a case of just being there and keep keeping on doing it um it definitely definitely increases your influence and there's been a lot of academics who've testified to the fact that their grants uh and collaborations and and recognition has come through them uh, being active on Twitter and sharing some of their work. So that's um, that's crucial. Um, and then the next sort of round of opportunities that um, you, we, we sort of try and um, look for is again being able to be just be seen. Um, it's uh, it's funny how with so much happening and people being exposed to so much information, um, some of the good stuff that we miss. Uh, so this would, is the kind of platform that allows you to be almost push your way into a conversation. I know it sounds not perfect, but it's about being able to, you know, doing that respectfully and, and, and all of that, but being able to be part of conversations that you want to be part of rather than uh, someone inviting you to be a part of it. And you can also start your own, uh, but to start off on social media, I think it's great if you can use the hashtags and, and just get involved um, in these. And there are so many examples of how this works. Um, like, you know, if I was to go through my Twitter feed, for example, um, like all the time I see people I go, who, who is this person? Where do they come from? How, how do they have such a nice thing to say? Um, and, and then you start to sort of uh, dig in and, and that happens to a lot of people and a lot of organizations, especially even at times like this. I think yesterday I was, I was watching uh, something on TV about how a group of academics from different parts of the world um, somehow found a way to collaborate on, on vaccines and the sharing ideas about this and the you know the temperature um, concerns and all of those kind of things. I don't know the technicalities. I'm not going to pretend like I do. But um, yeah, it was just interesting to know how this sort of this this whole social media is sort of connecting everyone together and making life a lot easier. Um, and then we have uh, all our academics on Twitter. Um, the university itself has uh, a few really good examples. Um, I'm, I'm talking um, Dr. Anita Go um, is, is sort of a bit of a celebrity for us. Anytime she tweets, we just go, right, well, she's, you know, she's saying something, let's retweet it um, and things like that. Um, there are other people you can follow. One good example that I've noticed on the university is one uh, 
Susan Sawyer. I think she works in the pediatrics at the Children's Hospital. She's part of the university as well, and it works really nicely. Um, you don't have to just always have original content, retweeting, um, liking, um, that sort of thing just builds, builds momentum as well. Um, your Twitter profile. Now, this again is very similar to your LinkedIn. Make sure you have an image. You can use uh, background images. Um, and also, every time you tweet, I'd, I'd suggest you tag at Unimelb MDHS, which means it'll come up on our feed and it gives us a chance to retweet you to a much possibly a, a broader uh, and, a, and a more diverse audience. Um, so if any time you're tweeting about any organization, find out what their uh, tag is and just make sure you've done it um, so that you know it just grows your footprint almost. Um, include professional interests and hobbies. Um, you can be a little more abrupt here because that's essentially what this is about. So don't be shy. Um, include um, your specific interest areas. If you if you want to be known as someone in about, uh, uh, in a specific uh, sort of description, please go for it. Um, some people to follow. Here's here's a quick list. Um, these are all real characters of Twitter, the Twitterverse. Um, somehow, the new, um, I think she's uh, the head of um, population in the School of Population and Global Health, Nancy Baxter. We picked her up even before she worked with us or decided, uh, was announced that she was going to work with us. And we followed her and, you know, she's, she's pretty solid. Um, her posts and she's always there with an opinion or sharing someone else's. Um, similarly, there are heaps of other academics um, and I think in your circles, once you get into it, once you set up, it's it's not too hard to work that out. Um, um, here are some more people and hashtags uh, that I'd recommend you sort of use um, at the UniMelb. Uh, MDHS is the faculty. Um, things like the Doherty Institute and each event and each conference they'll have their own uh, hashtags as well so um, please make sure you find out who it is and uh, and what it is so that you get onto you get onto that sort of feed as well and and, and, and you're covered um, and again it's hard to just straight away work out what what the um, exact uh, what we use there the exact hashtag is and what can work and what can't work, but this is uh, it's, a, it's a case of trial and error. Um, Twitter features Twitter's got a few more features, especially since that you use it more regularly. Um, you can set up your own lists. Again, not to stress, this is not something that happens overnight. Um, you you can sort of experiment with it. Um, you can set up your own lists and uh, and and set up what you want to follow, um, so that it makes discovering content and monitoring content a lot easier. Um, this it's not that technical. Um, let's be honest. It's 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 just like I mean, once you've used Facebook for example over a long period of time, and people know to play around with their security settings and and block people and and you know hide this and show that and all of that twitter is very similar you it's it's very easy to use um all the list functions um and every time you you tweet something you can pick a list to share that with so you're containing your footprint a little bit but making it more focused um and then there's discovering and monitoring content um in terms of creating uh, your timelines as well how long you want a list uh, to go uh, I don't want to go into too much detail. This is a bit technical, but once you're set up and once you've used Twitter for a while, I think this is almost like a natural next step. So I'm sure you'll work it out. Um, if there's anything ever, just drop us a line at social media, MDHS social media. Uh, let's sort of share the email address at some stage later. Um, there is then trending topics. 
um, right now, obviously, Twitter is full of um, COVID-19, um, but still there's a lot of other topics that, that sort of create um, interest and you can follow them specifically. So it's about being able to set, set it up um, and using it sort of as, as, as and when you want to. Um, it's at the end of the day, it's personalization. It's about, you know, it's like how you decorate your room. It's just how you set up these preferences. Um, this is for like big time tweeters. This is more um, an institutional thing that uh, you can you can sort of schedule your tweets over for a whole week. Uh, I wouldn't bother. It's sometimes on, a, uh, on an individual scale unless you want to say something not today, but tomorrow, then it's worth scheduling it. But otherwise, you want to make it as uh, impromptu and and um, and current as possible. So, if you're if you're if you're tweeting every hour, then this is good. And if you want a weekend without your phone or your computer, uh, but again, there's a lot of benefits. But not at this stage, I'd say let's not worry so much about scheduling weekly. Um, Mm, that's all of that. Yes, um, that's uh, this is probably the the end end game for a lot of us. Um, and then you can always uh, there's a lot of analytics in Twitter as well. Um, you're looking at you know um, who's seen it, uh, how how they've reacted to it, um, that sort of thing. So. Um, again, there is, uh, these features do exist for every account, um, and it's worth sort of going and investigating it after you've done a few tweets to see what's working and what's not. So it gives you more of an idea around uh, what to change or what to keep doing, what you've been doing better. Um, best practices. Um, you don't have to use all your 280 characters. Uh, sometimes you don't have to at all. You can keep it shorter, and that works. Images always work. It always gets attention. Try and find an image for everything you have to say. Um, and another mistake that people normally do when they use Twitter is they just just retweet. Don't just retweet. Always try and have something to say about it, even if it is just well done or good luck or a or this is interesting, or uh, you've got to read this, or something like that. Um, that's uh, that's really important. And then the other one is um, hashtags. No tweet is a good tweet if it doesn't have a hashtag. Um, so make sure you have. And 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 also, there's no point in having a hundred hashtags. Maybe not hundreds an exaggeration, but let's have we recommend three. Uh, as a maximum, uh, but at least one should do the trick. There's then all the emojis. Um, I just have a quick look at this uh, slide. It's again, this sort of changes, but in, in our space, we're trying to credit a lot of the work. So it's easier to use an emoji than use an entire sentence. And it's very understood, a lot of these things. Um, trends. And again, it's important to sort of be current. Um, these things change a lot over time. So just keep an eye out for these. Um, finally, the most important one, promoting yourself. Um, I. Like I said at the very beginning, this is a challenge usually with academics um, who are a bit gun shy about sharing uh, their wins, um, and but that's what it is. Just never be, never be shy. And it's not like anyone's gonna really judge you or anything. Um, I think this is a done thing. It's an accepted thing that they be doing that we do it. So why not? Um, you can also pin the larger announcements um, if you are doing that sort of thing. Uh, so that the first thing that everyone sees, what I mean by pin is whatever you say after that, this particular post will always stay at the top. 
Um, and that's a good way of making sure the first impression you're making on your page is the one that you, this particular thing. So worth remembering and worth using at all times, actually. Uh, especially if you've had a big win recently and like you're being published somewhere and make sure you put it up at the, at the top. Um, this is, again, uh, something that comes from practice, trial and error. Um, there's, there's lots of presentations, there's lots of, lots of do's and don'ts on, online about uh, how to grow an audience. But essentially, what we try and do is to make sure that make your content relevant, make sure it's as original as possible. What I mean by original is not you're not reinventing the wheel every time, but you're trying having making a comment or a statement at all times, and that you're cross referencing between other platforms so your audience sort of grows. Um, and always like and follow and tag others because once you you know you follow someone they look at oh, all right who's following me okay i'll follow this person and that's one way of um growing and 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 the key there though is to make sure you're starting and getting involved in conversations um i'm if it's, it's the, the definition of that is just essentially um you know being able to ask questions and and, and if someone's looking for an answer, point them to a direction if you don't have the answer yourself, but as long as you're getting involved in it. Um, and, and, and it's all relevant to that particular central conversation. Um, right, this is what everyone worries about, making that mistake, right? You, <laughs> we all freak out sometimes. We say something, especially when you're doing it in the early stages, you you post a message and you're going you're sweating you're going oh my god what have I said or do you think someone's gonna you know troll me or or any of that <laughs> don't worry there's so much out there that if it's not uh, if it's not interesting it'll get lost if it is interesting someone will pick it up and overlook the errors everyone does it um, and then you have time anyway you've got three seconds. Um, sorry, not three seconds. You've got time to go and edit it. Um, and if you don't, um, you have a few minutes to um, to to rethink it. So it's it's, it's I, I know it's it's the hardest hurdle to jump in this environment, but don't worry, everyone makes mistakes. Um, you can you can start again. Um, or yeah, like I said, you can use the edit feature really well. Um, so uh, it's um, it's not um, it, again. It won't come. Re I mean, you will have this little bit of anxiety when you first uh, post, but just remember, you've got plenty of options. Uh, it's not like someone's waiting for us to make a mistake so they get a screen grab of it and use it later. You can always edit it or delete it. <laughs> and. Um, yeah, and, and it's, it's it's fine. Um, there's there's sometimes we make that same mistake on the university page. We've like you know in a time like this where the comms are coming out really really quickly. There's one thing after another. There's lots of grammatical errors. There's lots of spelling mistakes. But at the end of the day, if people are to get the gist of what you're saying, that's all they're interested in. They're not interested in the grammar. They're interested in the grammar on a published paper or on, on your website, but not so much here. So it's not something to um, worry about. Um, right, what are we doing next? This will be the last slide, I think. Um, in an ideal world, um, we'd all have a LinkedIn and a Twitter profile. We'd all be following each other. We'll all be making sure we follow the people uh, we sort of, sort of want to network with um, and that we are cross-promoting our, our, our accounts and we're tagging the right people. So, I mean, I'd always say tag um, uh, Unimail MDHS, that's the account that I see or my team. We all have a look at it every day and we love content from our researchers that we can share with the broader audience. So. So please do, and um, and from events um, wherever you are, just tweet, uh, and that helps to increase your footprint. 
Uh, that's essentially that. I might leave this slide up just to uh, uh, inspire, I don't know, just to get you going a little bit uh, and get started. But that's essentially me. I hope I did not talk for too long. No, that was great. Thank you so much. That's really insightful as well as some good tips for us. So I'll open the floor up to um, anybody who's got any questions. Um, so we've got uh, Kate. He's got a question for us. Hi, Danny. Thanks for the talk. Um, so can you hear me? Um, very faint. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, I, I, I can make it up. Yeah. OK. So one of the, the questions that I had, this seemed very directed at um, individuals promoting their own research and I know you're fading you're fading you're fading can um, you hear hold, me? hold on one sec is this better yeah yes yeah. okay um so oh. a lot of a lot of this was focused on individuals promoting their own research do you have any advice for people say in michelle lamb's position or veronica's position or my old position for promoting research at a kind of center or institute level? Same principles. Yeah. Exactly the same principles that, that apply. Um, number one, uh, it's about building networks. Um, the, if making sure you follow the people that you want to, for, uh, you think you need to follow or the people are going to have the most impact in your, in your end objective. Um, um, and making sure the content is precise, uh, concise, and as um, and, and, you, and and you tag the right people and make the right hashtags and that sort of thing. Um, and it's, it doesn't really vary unless um, look. Sometimes, right in, in in the social space, an individual becomes an institution, and an institution can become an individual. Um, and, I hate this example, but someone like a Trump on Twitter. That's that's an individual account, but it's almost an institution in the way it's followed or the, the kind of impact it has. And similarly, you have institutions that have that kind of individual impact. So, and it's about building that brand, I suppose, at the end of the day, without being technical here, but um, the same principles do apply in short. Okay, perfect, thank you. Anyone else got any questions? Got Sam? Yes. Hi. Thanks, Janu. That was great. Um, and I learned a lot as a non-social media user. Um, can you hear me okay, Janu? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Okay, yeah. perfect. I was just going to say, um, come on, how can you not be a social media <laughs> I know. Imagine, imagine. But but I am somebody who who... Yeah, I guess I've sat on the fence for a long time and watched everything happening around me. So a slow adopter. I've got two questions. One of them is, um, you know, as far as the LinkedIn web page, I'm interested in how many research researchers use that. So, for example, at the University of Melbourne, we have to have really up-to-date staff or we tend to have up-to-date staff web pages yep. where it does sort of profile a little biography and our outputs and our list of publications. What would be the advantage of me of using LinkedIn as well as, so if somebody wanted to look me up, they could find me and find that sort of information anyway. Um, so the first one is that uh, LinkedIn will show up on a lot more broader searches. Mm -hmm. Like in terms of, uh, we call it uh, keywords and things like that. I think LinkedIn, do a lot more around um, tech, uh, sorry, you know, um, um, in the back end, a lot of their content appear on searches fair more, a fair lot more than uh, individual universities' web page. Yeah. Because there's okay. layers to that. Um, so that's the first one. Um, and the second one is more people tend to search on LinkedIn where they'll have access to these searches from 100 different universities rather than go to 100 different pages and look for individual researchers. 
So there is that, there is a definite benefit um, in terms of reach, is what I wanted to say. Okay. Yeah, of people who otherwise wouldn't know you. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, wouldn't wouldn't oh. look through a web. Uh, wouldn't think to. Yeah. 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 Okay. That makes sense. And then my other question is, okay, as somebody who really knows nothing about Twitter, if uh -huh. I did want to, you know, you said it takes a while to get on and to, to practice and just get comfortable. How long do you think that would take a naive person? Right. Ah, that's a great question, actually. How long does it take to get the rhythm of Twitter? Um, it, uh, uh, it depends on how many times you tweet. It depends on how big your initial networks are let's say let's hypothetically say you you set up your twitter profile today you follow uh 10 people by the end of the day and tomorrow you tweet once and then you don't do it uh for a couple of days and then you do it uh you know three days later if you keep if and, and if you start building those bringing those intervals a lot closer i'd say within about the first 20 tweets you'll work it out okay 20 tweets and some people tweet 20 times a day yeah some people tweet once a day uh, we I, I would recommend uh, starting off with maybe once a day then make it a couple of times a day um, depending on how much content you're sharing but once you I think by the time you do your 20 tweets and when I'm saying tweet, not just your own content, I'm talking about things like retweeting and, and liking things and all of that as well. well. And it's just a little bit of practice and then you start to feel the rhythm. Um, but, but you have to persist. Okay. So, sometimes I've noticed people go, oh, I don't really have much to say. And that's the end of that. And then you fall out of the habit and it never happens again. So don't let that happen. Just, uh, just a bit of persistence. Um, and, 20 tweets, I'm saying a couple of weeks. Okay. Great. Thanks, Janine. No worries. And good luck. Thank you. <laughs> we'll see how we go. <laughs> Anyone else got any other questions? Um, I suppose I've got one. So, for example, I have a Twitter account, but I'm fairly inactive on it. Only a prob I don't tweet as much as what you've mentioned, like maybe one tweet a day and not even, maybe one tweet a week, not even. So um, what are the advantages of having a Twitter account and not being active on it? See, what happens is, right, um, it's, you, you can just fo follow 3,000 people or 3 million people and just have a massive feed and you can go through all of that. The thing is, the objective here is to be to be seen. For you to be able to, like I said, for people to know what you know. Um, if you're if you're not going to post, that we won't achieve that objective. But if your objective is to just stay in, stay up to date with everything that's going on, yes, what you're doing is what you're doing is okay. Um, but. I, I, is, that, is that recommended? Do you really need Twitter to do that? I don't think so. I think you can, you don't need an account to do that. You can just log into Twitter and just search for something and just have a look. Um, I, I suppose at the end of the day, our objective is to make sure that we are promoting what we do as best as possible. Um, and for that, you need to build your own followers, not just people you follow, but people who follow you, who can see what you want to say. Um, and therefore, I think you need to uh, be a little more active. See, that's what, I, like I keep saying, uh, lots of people have Twitter accounts, they don't tweet. Um, I think there's a little bit of shyness. I don't know if it's shyness. It's just, it's just a different, it just takes a little bit of a mindset shift to uh, do that. Uh, but that's the way we're going. That's that's where we're heading. And if you, if your best collaborations are going to come through social media, why not do it? Yeah. Uh, we've got a question. Oh well, we've got a question, uh, a comment from Christian yeah. in the question and answer box. So he said, "Thanks for the presentation. Even if you don't post on Twitter, it is worth being there." All of key people in your area and you keep keep up to date with the things and learn about how 
people think. This helps develop and refine research questions. I think it's okay to lurk. Thank you. <laughs> it is okay to lurk. Like I said, like I, was just, I think it's the same, same situation as you, isn't it, Michelle? Uh, 100%, there's nothing stopping you from lurking. Uh, but then it depends on what your objective is. If your objective is just that, then that's fine. Uh, but we want to grow the network, um, your own network and be part of other networks. Uh, so if, and, and, and like, let's say you can miss out on bits if you're not active, um, because that's how the algorithm sort of is set up as well. Uh, and this is, this is an assumption, this is not fact. Uh, I can't prove the fact that this is how Twitter works uh, in terms of how it's set up, but you tend to see more uh, if you do interact with certain kinds of posts. It does follow you a little bit. So I would suggest just tweeting a little bit, but if you don't, if, if you don't want to, then that's, that's a different situation, but um, it comes down to what, what you want out of it. We've got, okay, let's take one last question from Christian. Hi guys, thanks for a nice presentation, Dini. Um, I was just gonna make one comment about people who are probably still feeling quite shy and yeah. not wanting to go yeah, out yeah, yeah. And, and make tweets. And um, one of the strategies that works really well is if you think about um, using your organization or, or your research group's Twitter accounts to promote the work that you do. And that way you don't feel like you're personally putting it out there. So talk to whoever's running the Opus um, Twitter or even get access to the username and login and you can maybe promote some of the research that you do through that. So you don't feel like you're pumping up your own tires and that'll obviously get it out. And then of course you can then share it later using your own personal profile as well. So that often helps people break down the barriers from that. Yeah, that's put themselves out. 100%, that's, uh, that's one way of doing it. Uh, um, often, sometimes, um, maybe in a smaller sort of group, the access to the, um, the institutional Twitter account may be available, but in a larger space, it might not be. Um, but um, yeah, but that, that, is, that is a great, great way if you can do it. It's, uh, it gives you, or even, or, Another thing could be setting up as a group um, um, and like, you know, two or three different uh, people getting together um, and setting it up as a group and then tweeting and then going from there to being more individual. That can work as well. Great. Thank you. Well, I think that's all the time we've got for today's webinar. Thank you for everybody's um, participation in your questions. And I really like to thank Dino for, you know, giving us this really insightful presentation. Thanks everyone. Thank you so much. Thanks, uh, thanks for listening to me all the time. I think I went over time, did I? Um, no, you no. spot on. Um, and if there are any questions, um, you could you could uh, email me. How, how do we share the email address, or is is that something you can send an email out to everyone? Um, I think Michelle Lamb will organize um, sending out if anybody's interested in the slides or um, getting in um, your contact details. If you're happy to share that. Yep, definitely. So after this webinar, it'll be put up online on our Opus website and our YouTube channel, and um, I'll be sending round another email to everyone um, and also onto our mailing list to see if uh, anyone's interested in further questions and to have a look at the slides. Brilliant. Um, so I can expect a lot of people to be setting up accounts and then tagging uh, our Unimail MDHS uh, this afternoon. Brilliant. I, I can go in and have a good look at it all. Great. Thanks everyone. Cheers, thank you. Have a good afternoon.